A double manhunt is now underway to find the attackers, both described as Asian men in their early 20s. Um. Um. Mm, uh, <laughs> this is the problem. It's 2016 all over again. The free, the feminists have gone too far, bro. It's like these arguments are such a dog. Okay, and if you think about it for more than 10 seconds, you see that. You see how insane it is. I think he's it's fair. clearly made a significant is fair. of the population frightful and neurotic. It has made a significant portion of the male population lonely, resentful, and callous. <laughs> it's Future right, generation. It's right. What's funny about this? I am on a bad track here. I am on a bad fucking track, all right? Because I tell you what, I'm watching not now to mock, but to agree. I wanted to see what he said about this bear thing, okay? And listen, I might disagree with him. I might disagree with him, okay? I might disagree with him, who knows, right? I'm gonna be give it my fair shake. But I noticed that on Twitter the other day, he got into it a little bit with a feminist because basically this feminist did this really cringe thing where they responded to the man and the bear story by, and I showed it on stream, but they put up an image of a story in regards to um, a woman getting raped. She got raped by someone and then also got raped by a, the person that tried to save them, a person that came along in a car basically, right? <laughs> And Sargon replied to it and basically just pointed out that it was Asian men. Ooh. <laughs> okay, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. So, yeah, this is what it was. Men being offended by women's response to the bear or man question had me thinking of the story from 2017. Teenage rape victim raped again by driver she flagged down for help. And then Sargon responded, why would men do this? A double manhunt is now underway to find the attackers, both described as Asian men in their early 20s. Um, mm, uh, <laughs> um. Um. Uh, wait a second. The British Asian thing is so cringe, as if Asia isn't the most diverse continent. If I had to guess, I would presume that they mean Indian Pakistani. Not because I'm racist, but because that generally is what that is in reference to. Normally, it would be like Chinese men or something like that. I don't know. I feel like you'd say Chinese. But that's going to be my guess. Did you have to look in the replies at all? It's not about race, it's about sex. Yes, that's why I highlighted the undifferentiated universal men did it. <laughs> Ooh. What are you actually trying to achieve here? Men are particular, you're not universal. Indeed, I made a reference to a particular group of men, those taking offence at women's response to the barrel man question, which you seem to be a part of. See, this is actually quite interesting because this uh, Billy Bragg person is a radical feminist. Literally a radical feminist, as Fanatic would say. What happened to Fanatic, dude? But yeah, she is like a radical feminist and I presume they probably maybe know of each other because of the trans stuff. They probably like agree super hard on the trans stuff. But then these radical feminists, because some radical feminists, their beliefs about trans people are rooted in their belief that men are fundamentally ba uh, bad, uh, uh, evil, right? Like they're rapists. Like basically they're, they're like primed, they're like programmed to rape, essentially. And so their view on it is, well, they believe a trans woman is... Um, uh, wait, <laughs> how do I say it? They, 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 they look at a trans woman and they see male about to rape me. That's what they see. Okay. That's their perception. So that's where a lot of their views come from. Like, it's not even necessarily that they like, you know, have got a particularly sophisticated view on the, any of the topics about it. It's literally just, they are a male and males rape. That is their kind of view. Right. But then obviously when they talk about men, they still say the same stuff because they believe it just about all men. 
So uh, yeah, it's very irritating. No, I'm not against the, you picking bears. I'm sorry you live in a state of fear. I hope you're the one. One day you'll realize why that is. We'll get to this in a sec. Mate, you have no idea the life I've lived. Ooh. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Fanatic got blacklisted by Destiny for accusing me of being racist and not being able to substantiate it. Well, I mean... <laughs> did it, wait, hang on a sec. He had a panel, didn't he? Wait a minute. I thought he had a panel that was super important and you couldn't talk back to him and you had to respect it. What happened to that? I thought he had a panel that he was very keen on and he was very keen on keeping it to a certain certain point. What, what happened to that, eh? I'm sure okay, that Fnatic isn't the kind of guy that would want to look to a white man as a master. Fine. Surely. Put it in cuck Responsible for his success. UK political correctness. English they, them. Grab your butter knives and storm the streets if you have a permit, and kindly ask the indigenous community of Middle Eastern descent to just pipe down about the raping. Thank you very much for the 333. Appreciate it. Help stream page. That's a lot better. Appreciate that. That is exactly what it would be. So, yeah, there we go. Anyway. That's uh, what piqued my interest in what Sargon had to say about all of this because he was having to go at a woman, which is, you know, right up my street, you know. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, find out what's going on. I saw this video of a guy responding to a comment and the comment basically said, like, you can't tell me that a woman would be less intimidated by a bear than a man. And honestly, I immediately thought, no, I'd much rather face a bear while I'm alone in the woods than a man while I'm alone in the woods. Like, objectively, a crazy thought. Like, crazy thought. And my immediate rationalization for that thought is a bear can be reasoned with. There is a current viral trend of feminists announcing that they would rather be alone in the woods with a wild bear than be with a man. Okay, does this not <laughs> does this not bring back good or bad memories? This fucking image. I remember watching this shit like fucking seven, six years ago or something. It all started with this TikTok video. Would you rather be stuck in a forest with a man or a bear? Bear. Man is scary. Um, with a bear. What I've heard about bears, they don't always attack you, right? Unless you, like, fuck with them. So maybe a bear. <laughs> Prob depends what man, but probably a bear. 100% a bear, which is, like, terrifying to say, but... Definitely a bear. Some men are very scary out there. A bear. <laughs> I would say, I would say a man. American feminists then took to social media to announce that they, too, would rather be alone in the wild with a bear than with a man that they don't know. Which is, of course, absurd. If you actually okay, read, wait. they don't know. Which is, of course, absurd. I mean, <laughs> it is absurd. This is the problem, right? This is the problem. It's 2016 all over again. The free, the feminists have gone too far, bro. But we are back. I feel it feels like we're back there again, and we've got these insane takes. You know, this is is this 2024's mansplaining. Are we back at the man, you know, the BuzzFeed mansplaining video? I know, a manspreading video. Are we back there again, you know? Oh, why do guys need more space on a bus seat? Look how, look how, look how selfish and greedy men are, taking up all the seat. Anyway, nowadays, you know, maybe a woman, maybe a woman might need a lot of leg room, if you know what I mean, okay? Eh? That used to be a bit of a bit of a blue joke, but now it's just reality. I love it when they respond with the cartoon meme of the woman trying to pet the bear and then getting eaten. My dude, we're not unaware that bears are dangerous. We make jokes about petting big animals, but none of us are out here actually trying to pet bears. Not true, by the way. We saw the TikTok the other day. We know they're dangerous and we still picked it. No one expects me to be nice to the bear, even though it's dangerous. No one expects me to not be afraid of the bear, even though everyone knows it's dangerous. I'm so like this is like antisocial freak behavior. How many men do women interact with in a day that are like literally no fucking danger to them whatsoever? In real terms, what percentage of men that you're going to interact with in a given week are going to be a danger to you? You know? 
Like, it's just so obvious. that It's an extremely low percentage versus engaging with a single bear. 100% of bears are a danger to you and like X percentage or whatever you want to call it of men are dangerous to you. It's so stupid, man. Absurd. <laughs> if you actually read the accounts of bear attacks, they are horrific. I found this particularly awful account of a young Russian woman who was attacked and eaten alive by a bear and her... Hey, that's the one we looked at, isn't it? ...her cubs, and it took her over an hour for her to die. She was even able to phone her mother and tell her that she was being eaten alive, because apparently bears don't just kill you first and then eat you. And it's hard not to notice that the city-dwelling women who gave their opinions on wild animals that they have little experience of are living in blissful ignorance and have no idea what a bear attack is like. Then the argument went online, and one point was made that there are far fewer bear attacks on women than there are attacks by men. Per capita! Per capita! Per capita, 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 okay? Can the lefties please understand basic maths and statistics, please? Yeah, obviously there's less bear attacks because there's less interactions between humans and bears than there are between humans and humans. Fuck me, dude. Exactly. Exactly that. I saw one the other day and it was talking about um, PDF, PDF file rates. And it had like the white guy um, like stood at the tallest at like what 61 percent or something and it had black people at um like 18 percent or something like that right <laughs> yeah per capita is probably the wrong term but you know what i mean don't you the point i'm trying to get across is obviously there's less um incidents between a man between bears and a woman because there's less interactions between bear and women right that's the point I'm trying to make. But in any case, yeah, it was like, hang on a minute. You realize that this little meme you've made <laughs> shows black people overrepresented in. And then they were like mocking the idea that someone would respond with a per capita argument per interaction. Yeah. But they were mocking the idea that of like someone responding with a per capita argument. But it's like, no, that's exactly how you have to look at it, because obviously in absolute terms, the biggest population is likely to have the biggest representation. And in some, I mean, in some cases, some minority groups are, are high. We don't need to get into that. We don't need to get into that, okay? We don't need to get into that. Yeah, it's not per capita. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say, don't you? What is this? Would you rather be in the lone in the woods with a bear or a man? The bear, because any random man is statistically far more likely to pose a serious threat, whereas the bear okay, would probably wonderful. just leave me alone. But how do I make money off depressed people? Thank you for the two pounds, agitated minotaur. The man, because I probably wouldn't have to change my behavior in order to stay safe if I encountered a man, whereas I absolutely would if I ran into a bear. I wouldn't feel threatened by either one because I'm always properly armed whenever I go. What color is the bear? What color is the man? Uh, wait, what? What's that? What? And of course, there are fewer attacks on women by bears than by men for obvious reasons. Proximity. If women encountered yes. as many bears in a day as they do men and spent as much time with them, then I'm sure the stats would be alarming, to say the least. But this is really not about the bears, though. This is about a few other things. The most obvious is a kind of selection bias, where feminists, in their determination to confirm to themselves that their hatred of men is just... Actually, also, I know it wasn't exactly correct for that, but I do think the per capita argument does work as well, right? Uh, because there's, there's what, uh, 165 million men in the US, and there's probably, like, well, I don't know if I can get an easy figure here. 600k bears or something like that maybe more but certainly not as there's there's way less bears than there are men um human men in the us justified 
excessively focus on crimes by men against women and get a disproportionate impression of the danger that the okay, let's go back. average men that is really not about the bears, though. This is about a few other things. The most obvious is a kind of selection bias where Jeez. feminists... Jeez. <laughs> the smuggler. Dude. I don't know how he does it. On his show, he sounds fairly normal. He sounds like a normal broadcast kind of guy. But here, he sounds... He's gone back to the smuggler again. <laughs> he must record these at home. And he's got it set up in such a way as to get the smuggler across. ...in their determination to confirm to themselves that their hatred of men is justified, excessively focus on crimes by men against women, and get a disproportionate impression of the danger that the average man presents to the average woman. No doubt, many of the more virulent feminists are damaged people who have been abused in the past, and so acting out like this is really just a way of expressing the pain of that abuse, which we should take into account when we consider their opinions. However, I suspect that for most of the women hey. taking part in this trend, they are really just trying to vent their frustration over the general level of uncertainty that exists between men okay, and women wonderful. in society. How do I make and perhaps also... People? The per capita argument would only work if you control for the presence of lots of other people. Grape doesn't generally happen in public. Thank you for the five dollars. Wait, what are you trying to say? No, no, sure. I mean, yeah. You know what I was trying to say, though? You know what point I was trying to get across? You know, there's less interaction, isn't there? So a broader feeling of isolation that many young women may feel. In traditional societies, there are all kinds of formal rules which govern the interactions of men and women, which renders the behaviour of each predictable to the others so that both sides can feel safe during interactions. The West also had these prior to the latter half of the 20th century. I, I'm trying to find the Sargon Soyjak. There's a hilarious Sargon Soyjak where he's, like, he's, he's sucking in all these books into his brain. It's one of my favourite Soyjaks. Does anyone have it as we're talking about Sargon? Do you know the one I mean? Someone must have it. Look at this footage from England in 1901. The women who walk past in the background all wear shawls, with their hair covered and only their faces showing, as many modern-day Muslim women tend to do. The past was much more prescriptive than the modern era is, and I think that these lack of prescriptions underpins many of the issues we are seeing today. Men and women had quite definite life paths that they could reliably expect to follow which would contain many relations between mothers and fathers, children and parents, extended families, neighbours and communities, all of which made up a person's place in the world. And these come with obligations. Women's liberation detached women from many of these and encouraged women to be independent and go into the workforce, which created the kind of lifestyle many young women have today. They move away from... I don't know. Yeah. What was the... Re the yeah. It, people are saying it in chat. I don't know. I don't know anything about it, really. But yeah, people are saying it's because it's because it was dirty. Well, yeah, because obviously it was lots of smog and stuff knocking about in the air. Yeah, I don't. I'm not really familiar with um, women dressing like fucking Muslims in the UK. From their families to get a higher education at university, and then move to a city to start a career. In addition okay. to this, I think there are a lack of romantic bonds that many women fail to. Sargon is just saying all of them were covered, aka all doing the same thing, not that they should be covered. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I don't think, okay, I don't think Sargon, I mean, Sargon is a big anti-Muslim guy, isn't he? So I don't think he'd be for shawls and stuff like that. Make with men. Casual encounters have introduced strange tensions between the sexes and made relationships bewildering and unstructured. Expectations of what should or should not be done are confused and ill-defined. This has to have some kind of psychic effect on people, and I suspect it's what makes comics like this one resonate. Instead of feeling situated and secure... <laughs> Dude, what? This is a classic Sargon video, isn't it? What the fuck is this? Vague sense of dread. Why are you here? Just chilling. Just doing my thing. Dude, what's that? Oh, 
Women, yeah, women entertainment. But this is, though, isn't it? This is. I'll tell you what. Oh, wait, no, hang on. I'll tell you what. Uh, this is just reminding me. I literally never covered this. But I probably um, should have done because of how fucking banging this was at the time when this drama was happening. Who? This is more women's entertainment. Who remembers the history? <laughs> Do you remember this? One of the many differences between me and my husband. Oh, look, the last ripe peach. I'll save it for the kids. They love peaches so much. Oh, look, the last ripe peach. I'll use it as a special treat in my daily smoothie. Do you remember this? Oh, classic. But yeah, this was a whole thing, wasn't it? Like, it was such an odd thing because it was clear that the kind of, the, the, the anger was dripping through the panels. I'm so excited for my birthday because it's the only day I won't have to do the dishes and make lunches. Okay. Right. <laughs> Why did you draw the cock bulge? That's not a cock bulge, that's his shorts, isn't it? I love when people found out she was a neurotic stay at home mom and he worked long days every day all week. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> Yeah, she came across as a kind of very bitter individual, you know? Or, or maybe it was all just a bit. I don't know. Maybe it was just a bit and uh, she was doing it for attention. BWC. I think that many modern women do feel isolated and unsure of what will happen tomorrow. Come on, let's see what else the smuggler's often far got to say. Home and on their own. In a world where half the population can seem predatory and uncaring and without any men of their own to make them feel safe. Hey. Indeed, this all seems to be the general thrust of the argument in favour of bears over modern men. Hey, look! Quote, bears feminist. are more He's a feminist. predictable. Perhaps this is why some of the feminist memes have essentially been demanding that men in general express contrition about how men in the abstract treat women in the abstract. Now imagine that when your gender answers this question en masse, and they're all giving the same answer and the same reason for why they would choose the dangerous wild animal. Oh my god, dude. It's men's re it's always why is everything men's responsibility for fuck's sake? Men built an entire society that you now get to enjoy the fruits of, okay? And now we've got to change the answer to this fucking question. Are you for real? No, stop being hysterical and neurotic. That's what you need to do, okay? The gender that has harmed you over centuries harmed your gender over centuries is laughing about it bitching about it mourning about it joking about it and calling you all liars because that's the situation that we're in and it's not a game to us it's not a joke because when most of us leave our front doors every morning it's not a dangerous wild animal we're going to come across it's you the vast majority of women will leave the house on a given morning and go to work and literally nothing will happen or just it will be their normal routine it is like such a small percentage of people that will have, like get raped why <laughs> you walk out the door and there's just a horde of men ready to rape <laughs> oh my god this reminds me of dating discourse as well where it's like you know Men would speak about like, yeah, kind of dating sucks because it's difficult to find someone. It's difficult to meet someone on the internet. And, you know, women tend to go for like the highest percentile of looks and blah, 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 and all this stuff, right? And you say this to like a woman, a feminist, and the feminist would go, yeah, well, when we go on a date, we might get raped. <laughs> what? What on earth? And I'm amenable to women's issues with dating and stuff. Totally. I get it. It's, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of stories about it. You know, and ones that are more reasonable tend to talk about how, you know, guys are like, 
often excessively sexual. Um, you know, they are very cookie cutter in how they'll approach you. They don't have much of a unique idea of how to talk to you and so on and so on. And there's all valid things to talk about, right? And it's like, you know, things you can learn from as a man too in listening to that in how to like improve your chances and stuff. But yeah, the extreme ones go to, we're going to get raped when we go on a date. As if, as if like going to a bar for a drink with a guy is like, you know, high alert for rape. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, it just kind of reminds me of that, you know? It's um, just this extremity of perspective to act like you're constantly as a woman on the precipice of rape in modern society. It's you. And you, as a collective, are first of all refusing to accept the damage that you have done to us over many, many centuries. Why that damage might have led to... The damage you have done to us over many centuries. So men share a joint responsibility for the actions of people hundreds of years ago that you've got nothing to do with. This is like the femoid version of um, reparations, isn't it? <laughs> It's like these arguments are such dog shit, okay? And if you think about it for more than 10 seconds, you see that. You see how insane it is to be the idea that you are to be held responsible for the acts of people hundreds of years ago that you had nothing to do with and very likely completely disagree with. But no, you've got to be held responsible for that. Fuck me, dude. It's insane. But these arguments, I mean, I feel like maybe the pendulum swung a bit. I don't know. Maybe. But... You know, back around 2016 and stuff like this was what it. this was the, all the points and everyone, you know, and it was expected, you know, there's a societal, a social pressure to agree with these retarded fit feminist talking points, which I think is one of the reasons that this backlash happened and it, with the anti SJW movement rose up because the arguments were so bad and so stupid. This is reparations for white women, except the difference is they will actually get it. It was being afraid of you and that being ingrained in us and more than that because you're refusing to accept any of this you're refusing to accept the fact that the only way that this narrative that you dislike so much changes is if you guys change not only are they looking for a flood of social media sympathy from men to reassure themselves that actually men everywhere are in fact safe to be around or when men object and mock them for this absurd opinion the feminists take a kind of self-satisfied pleasure in the fact that these men are justifying feminist misandry. However, there is something underneath even this. Men's lack of predictability and safety is being used as a moral cudgel by the feminists in an attempt to control men's behaviour through shame and guilt, which is the last option these women have to try and change society. They can't pull on the bonds of love and sentiment. However, if the widespread mockery to these strong, independent women is anything to go by, it seems that they're trying to cross a bridge they have already burnt. Liberation from men meant liberation from material reliance on men, which in turn meant men's liberation from the moral dictates of women. Yo! Feminism destroyed the longhouse. The feminists of the 60s and 70s began the process of tearing women out of their social place in traditional society by emphasising their power, capability... I've only been afraid of a few men. In the situation, a man has hurt me. A man has saved me. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the other... I was joking about, you know, <laughs> this idea of a fireman going into a building to seek out women to rape. Um, but yeah, obviously, like, it's not to say that there's no male bad guys or whatever, but it's it's this idea that, like, you need to be afraid, where it's like... You know, the likelihood is, yeah, exactly that. If you get hurt by a man, you're probably going to get saved by a man as well, you know? Be a police officer, fireman, whatever. ...and autonomy. Women were encouraged to have it all. By the late 1990s, it was becoming apparent that having it all by yourself was a curse rather than a blessing. And by the 2010s, modern feminism had manifested into a movement that was focused not on the power of women, but instead the vulnerability of women. We learned that we lived in a rape culture that was unsafe for women, oh that university God, campuses were more Bro. dangerous for women than the Congo, and that women are in fact not free, but are structurally oppressed by patterns of male domination, which they do not possess the strength to overcome. I'm literally, it's literally a minute. Feminism's I'm be done. strange narrative arc has arrived at a point so pathetic that now they are challenging men to demonstrate that they are in fact 
better than wild animals. If men were beasts, then such an appeal could never work. So this amounts to an admission by feminists that all of feminism's drive for liberation was actually a mistake. And now they are asking men for reassurance that they will once again make the world safe for women. Healthy, well-adjusted women who feel that they belong where they are and don't constantly look up tragic events to scare themselves about the opposite sex. Dude, he's right about this. Enjoying their lives. And Dude, relationships. he is so correct about this, though. That is so true, and that is exactly what some of these women are doing. They are looking at the question, and then they're going to look up women that have been raped, right? They don't, they're looking up bad stories about women getting raped to fucking back up the idea that they're safer with a bear. It's like a sort of... um. What is it called? What's it called when you're validating your argument with what you're looking at, you know? Rather than looking at it plainly. Do you know what I mean? Relationships. They aren't posting about bears and they aren't fretting about men in general because they know Confirmation bias, yeah. and love them. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's literally obvious contra confirmation bias, right? Oh, well, I think I'd be safer with a bear. And I know this because women get raped and there's loads of stories of women getting raped. Oh, women getting raped. Well, look, there's loads of stories here. Look, there's 10 stories. Of course I'm going to be safer. You know, literally working themselves up into a frenzy, fearing rape, looking at the worst possible things you could imagine, you know? It would be like, um, you know, it, it would be like sending my kids to school, right? And then going, hmm, God, what, school. School's very dangerous though, isn't it, for kids? Oh my God, I better go and look it up and then go and look it up and finding every story that I can of a kid getting like abused or something like that in a school and then going, there's all these stories about kids not being safe in school. I better take them out. Oh my God, you can't go to school anymore. It's dangerous there. You know, it's like this ridiculous confirmation bias where obviously if you go and look for the worst things, you're going to find it. But that doesn't mean that's the broad experience that you're going to have in society. And they know that <clears throat> these men will defend them should the need arise. The interactions they have with the men in their lives are predictable, are enriching, and don't give them cause for concern. I realise this won't be a popular take in many corners of the internet, but I actually don't think women's liberation was good for men or women. I think He's it's fair. clearly made a significant Sargon portion of the female population frightful and neurotic, and has made a significant <laughs> portion of the male population lonely, resentful, and callous. <laughs> It's Future right, generations right. might want He's to right. reconsider He's right what the that. boomer and millennial feminists have put upon them in this way. If you want more from <laughs> me, do go and subscribe to the podcast of the Lotus Seaters YouTube channel. Where I Dude, really I do think that point at the end is actually quite valid. I think that is, listen, I think that is true. I think, and, and what I like about it is he is pointing out the kind of, the bitter callousness too. There's a lot of truth in that, right? The smuggler. The smuckler calls it as it is. Okay. <laughs> anyway, okay, guys. Wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? Confirmation bias is the favorite tool of team sport enjoyers. And what's worse is a lot of them act like they still came to that opinion on their own. Dude, it happens all the time. It happens here on this channel, right? I see it happen all the time where I look at something that, you know, concludes on, on one side. And the righties in the audience are like chomping at the bit. Here. And it's like, hang on a minute. Just chill out. Like we don't know yet, you know? Relax. Relax, righties. Unfortunately, the lefties are a much smaller component these days. <laughs> funny that, isn't it? It's funny that how, you know, it's the lefties that can't seem to stand an alternative perspective. But the righties just get a bit mad. <laughs> Say dumb shit and then they're fine the next day. But yeah, lefties. Lefties, all are welcome, all are welcome in my chat, okay? Do you think your rape content has given you confirmation bias? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think you can't avoid bias. It's impossible. Anyone that says they're looking at it totally unbiasedly is like lying. Well, not lying, but like they're, they're kidding themselves. They're lying to themselves. You cannot possibly get rid of it all. And you just got to do your best to kind of step away from it, right? 